Hi, everyone. My name is Anthony Ruggiano, and in 1988, I was struggling with addiction, and I went into a treatment center. I set up a helpline number, which is 855-963-2113. That's 855-963-2113. That number, phones will be manned 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So if you're struggling with addiction, or you know someone that is struggling with addiction, please call that number and let me help. I will be hands-on. I will be personally involved in the person's recovery. They will meet me. They will spend time with me. And I will help them live a life beyond their wildest dreams. Welcome everybody to Reform Gangsters. My name is Anthony Ruggiano. And once again, welcome to Reform Gangsters. And if you enjoy my content, please click the like button and hit subscribe and ring the bell. If you support what I'm doing, become a member of Reform Gangsters. Get early access to all my content. Be part of the show uh, and ask me questions about the American Mafia. And I'll answer as many as I can. So join me in New York in the studio on March 12th. We are filming Behind the Gangster, which is a movie that's in production right now. Um, if you want an invite, please email me at anthonyruggianojr at gmail.com. Also, on Saturday, March 25th, Rita Gigante will be in Brooklyn doing a reading from her book, The Godfather's Daughter. You can get an autographed copy and, and to get tickets for the event at ritagigante.net. This event is special, not just because Rita... The Chin's daughter is there, but she's also will have on display her his robe, hat, and a few other items of her dad's, which are very famous. The robe is in many, many, many pictures. Um, he always wore the robe. So my daughter Tony Lee is going to be with her. Uh, they're going to do it a little interview, a little back to back about how it was growing up in families that uh their parents and grandparents were members of the mafia and uh how they dealt with the violence and the, and the, the rest of the lifestyle, how it affected them and traumatized them at some point. So um, I was thinking about what to talk about tonight. And it's so funny, you know, um, you know, I read the newspapers. I still read, even though I don't live in New York no more, you know, it's just a habit. I've been doing it my whole adult life. I read the, the New York Post every day and, and the New York Daily News. It's just something I've been doing since I'm a teenager. Um, and I still do it. I read them both online. And sometimes, you know, I, I'll see articles about things that uh, I have personal knowledge of or, and personally experienced. And, and you know, it's 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 always um, it's always like a feeling because, you know, like. Who could I tell it's, you know, who, like, you know, I read an article and my father was involved in it or I was involved in it. You know, it's like just it's weird sometimes it just you know, and I just smile to myself. It happened to me twice today. So the first time it happened to me, I got a text message from my cousin in New York, one of my female cousins in New York. And she told me, cuz there's a show on tonight at 1030 about Lutunza that Pierce Bronson's doing. So I said, Pierce Bronson, that's James Bond. What is he doing? Guy's English from England. Like he's doing a show on Lutunza. Like I, it didn't, it didn't register. Like what does this guy have to do with Lutunza or New York? The guy's, you know, I think he's English, right? Yeah, he played James Bond. He has to be. The guy, you know, I said, James Bond is talk. So I go on the channel. I go on the TV and I look at sure enough tonight at 1030 on the History Channel is uh, a documentary that they just made about Lutunza and he's the host. So now this robbery to this day, all these years later, still has people in amazement over this robbery. And how am I involved in this robbery is because, first of all, I knew the people that committed the robbery. And second of all, my father 
had firsthand knowledge of the robbery because the night of the robbery, my father waited for them at his club, Cafe Liberty, and after the robbery, they all went to his club and celebrated. And that that's a fact because that was testified at at the Lutunza trial of Vinnie Sarah. Even though he was acquitted, he was definitely a part of the robbery. How he was acquitted is beyond me because that jury, I don't know what the hell they were listening to that they acquitted him. But uh, that's another story for another day. But, uh, and then later on, my father had a gold and silver exchange and Jimmy... Burke and Vinny Asara brought my father and his partner, Tony Lee, all the jewelry from Lutunza, and they fenced it, you know, a, a while later. And, uh, you know, and the people that were murdered behind the Lutunza robbery, I knew them. I knew Murray, the wig, very well. My brother was, my brother used to loan Murray Shylock money. My brother was, felt really bad when Murray got murdered. I knew Stax, the, the black fella that uh, stole that, that got murdered over the van. So I, I have intimate relationships and intimate knowledge of, of that robbery. So to this, and after all these years, to see another new documentary come on TV blows me away. Like it just never goes away. It's like the Godfather. It's never going to end tomorrow. So I'm very curious to see what they, a new spin on it and what Pierce Bronson has to say about it, you know, 007, let's hear what he has to say about it. The second thing is, which is a funny story that I really haven't sp spoke about, I don't think at all, um, but it's it's a, it's kind of a cool story. So um, years ago in the 70s, there was this club that was opened in, in Manhattan called Plato's Retreat. It was the first sex swinger club it was like open the door for swingers. Um, and um, there was an article today in the Daily News about the club, about this Larry Stone, one of the owners. Um, it was a big article about it. And his partner, his name was Frankie Panisi. Frankie Panisi owned the La Mia Catering Hall on Ocean Parkway many, many years ago. I was actually married in that place in 1977. And Angel Gotti, John Gotti's daughter, was actually married in that place years later in the La Mia, and Frankie Panisi was the owner. Frankie Panisi was directly with Paul Castellano. Now, what I mean by that is what a lot of people don't talk about, there was people that were directly with bosses, underbosses, and captains, not with soldiers. They were directly with somebody. And what happened was if they were directly with a higher up, like a captain, he would designate one of his soldiers to service them. And what I mean by service them, go on sit downs for them and look after them, but they were still directly with the captain. They weren't with the soldier. Paul Castellano, Frankie Panisi was directly with Paul Castellano, but he was really good friends with my father, Frankie Panisi, like great friends with my father. And Paul Castellano knew this. So now I'm in prison. I'm an article correction facility, and we start reading about this sex club that opens up in Manhattan, Plato's Retreat, which was celebrities were going there and everybody was going there. And it's this big swing sex club that's all over all in all the magazines and all the newspapers. I mean, it's blowing up, blowing up. But I don't know. Frankie Panisi is one of the owners. I get a visit one day from my father. Right. And I'm in the visiting room and ought and ought to kill. I'm in the visiting room. And to this day, I, I crack up. It's a, a, and my father comes in and it's just him and I. He came by himself that day. Some sometimes he came by himself, sometimes he came with friends, but this day he happened to be by himself. So him and I are in the visiting room and you know, we're talking, and you could smoke back then in the visiting room. We're smoking cigarettes, we're drinking sodas, and we're bullshitting. And he says to me, and he looks at me and he goes, ah. Because this effing Paul Castellano sent for me the other day. I said, yeah, what's going on? He goes, ah, man. He goes, this Frankie Panisi, I got a service. He asked me to service him. He's got this club in Manhattan that I got a, that I got a, I got a service for Paul. If any problems, I got to take care of him for Frankie. I go, Frankie's got a club in Manhattan. I said, what club is that? He goes, I don't know, some club, Plato's Retreat. I went, Plato's Retreat. I said, the sex swinger club? I said, are you kidding me? I said, you go there? He goes, I only go there when it's closed. 
I said, Plato's, I said, Frankie Panisi owns Plato's Retreat. He said, yeah, he's a partner with this guy, Larry. What happened was Larry Stone went to Frankie Panisi for the money. Frankie Panisi had a lot of money. And of course, he was directly with Paul Castellano. So Frankie Panisi laid out, gave Larry the open the money to open up the club. And Frankie Panisi's sister actually worked the front door. Because when you come, it was only couples only. So you couldn't get in. Single guys couldn't get in. Single girls could get in, but not single guys. And his sister actually worked the front door. Um, so yeah, so my father, you know, so it's great, you know, I, I read these articles and, you know, if anybody ever saw that show on HBO called the deuce, that was that era, you know, that was that era with Times Square with the porn and the sex clubs and all that, you know, and then of course, when AIDS came, you know, um, the Frankie Panisi and Larry winded up getting locked up for income tax evasion and Frankie Panisi actually at that time got the most time ever. He, they gave him eight years for income tax evasion, which was unheard of. That was like an extraordinary stiff sentence for income tax evasion. And he actually winded up uh, in the same prison as my father. And I used to go visit my father with his wife, uh, Claire. Right. But the mob, you know, that's what they did back then. You know, they, the porn industry, the sex industry, they had it locked up, you know, in the 60s and 70s. You know, Matty the Horse who was a captain with the Genovese family. You know, you couldn't open up a gay bar in Manhattan without his. OK, he had them all. He had all the vending in Manhattan. He had all the pawn shops, you know, the Gambinos and, and the Genovese's had everything locked up. Um, you know, even the rich, that's how I got to know in the rich, you know, the owners of the rich were with Maddie the horse. They weren't with my father, but through Maddie the horse, my father was introduced to them and I became good friends with them. And that's how I got my foot in the door of the Ritz, where I happened to meet all the celebrities I talk about. So it was all, it was all in that era of, 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 you know, all that was going on, which is all gone now. That's a, that's, you know, that's history. You know, that's like a, it's gone. But you know, so that's my little stories. You know, so it's weird because you know, I lived this life. You know, like this big life, and you know, it's crazy because I read the articles and I watch these shows, and, and you know, and and uh, it just blows me away sometimes that you know I I know these people or I have knowledge of these things. It's crazy. You know, that's why I always say. You know, when I talk about that, and I don't mean this to knock anybody or anything, you know what I mean? Like, but when I talk on my podcast and when I do interviews, you know, I talk from the heart and I talk about my own personal experiences. You know, I know a lot of things about a lot of people, but I don't have firsthand knowledge of it, you know, but the, most of the stuff I talk about is stuff that I, I, I know I, I was involved in or I know about or I had relationships with. So um that's my little stories for today about the Lutanza tonight at 1030 and the story of Plato's Retreat, which was a famous uh, sex and swinger club back in the day that was uh, run by the Gambino family, who my father serviced, but never went there when it was opened. <laughs> I know you've seen The Godfather, Anthony. Yes, I did. Okay, so I had a chance to get Gianni Russo, who played Carlo in the yeah. film on my show, yeah. who lives in Manhattan still. Yeah. Um, I can't uh, vouch for the specifics, but he he claims that the house he's in now was was given to him by Frank Costello, and I'm meeting him at his house uh, Friday when I get down there to have dinner. He said, "Come there, I'll, he'll make me dinner, a good nice Italian dinner." And uh, he said he'll show me his house. He said, "Make sure you bring your camera." He said, "There's stuff in here from the movie business way back from The Godfather on up." And as you know, he's done I think about forty something films. I mean, he was in Any yeah. Given Sunday. He's done a a yeah, bunch no, of stuff. Because, so. yeah, yeah, no, he's been around. Yeah, well, I, I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it that that Costello gave it to him. Uh, did you, in all your experiences, did you ever hear of a lawyer by the name of Oscar Goodman? Oscar Goodman. He no. represented, uh, I'm sure you've seen Casino. He represented all the guys in Casino. He represented a guy. Well, they were out of Chicago, so I really didn't know. Um, but he represented guys all over. He represented well, yeah, guys out of Boston, yeah. California. And the only reason why I bring this up was the guy you were just talking to said he was from Kentucky. I don't yeah. know if you've seen yeah. this movie coming out called Cocaine Bear that they've been advertising. Yeah, it's all over. It's out now out here. It's in the theaters. Yeah, so i done a little research, and I actually just done a show on that Cocaine Bear. That's a true story to a certain degree. The bear did swallow some cocaine. He immediately had a heart attack and died. But the backstory to that, the guy that was smuggling that cocaine was tied into two brothers from Las Vegas called the Chagra brothers, Jimmy and Lee Chagra. I don't know if you've ever heard their names mentioned. Well, Lee was on trial and Jimmy hired a hitman 
to take out a federal judge. It was the first hit on a federal judge. The guy that he hired was Charles Harrelson, Woody Harrelson, the actor's father. Wow. How do you like that? Yeah. And I was, I clipped the interview and put it into the, the show that I did. Woody was saying, you know, I think my father should be out because the guy that supposedly hired him got, you know, acquitted on a retrial. The guy that acquitted him was Oscar Goodman. And I'm meeting him for lunch at his restaurant this weekend in Vegas, Saturday. When I was a kid in the seventies, the Ma the Gambino family, Neil had a lawyer that everybody used. His name was Joe Panza. He was always at the Ravenite. He was a criminal defense attorney. He we, and uh, he was my father's. He was all their attorneys. And then we, then we after that we used the uh, Mel LeBeckin, was like uh, we exclusive with the Gambinos. Yeah, what uh, about uh, Cutler? He used Cutler towards. Yeah, the but that was later right? on. John yeah. Gotti brought Cutler into the picture. This was Cutler was a kid then. Cutler, yeah. Jerry Shangel, who became a very famous defense lawyer. My father actually put Jerry Shangel on the map right out of law school. He he my father had a had a case in Suffolk County and a um a contempt case. As a matter of fact, I have a newspaper article from back in the 70s with my actually with a snapshot of my father and Jerry Shangel walking into court. It was in the it was in the newsday in Long Island and, and the Daily News. And that was one of Jerry's first mob cases, and he did such a great job for my father because he was at first an appeal lawyer. He used to write briefs. Then he started fighting cases, and he did such a good job that uh, people started using him because he did such a good job for Andy because that's how lawyers operated back then. If they did a good job for one wise, they wanted to do good for one wise guy, and they got their foot in the door because then the word spread, oh, yeah, fight Andy, use this kid, Jerry Shangel, and then everybody started using him. Yeah, so he was always close to me, Jerry. He even defended me on a he was uh, on a on a bookmaking. I mean, I took a plea and went to jail, but he was he was involved in a lot of he was involved in my case in um in Florida too with Nikki Carraza. He was Nikki's lawyer, but my father put him on the map. So that's how lawyers operated, like the guy you're oh, yeah. just talking about. Well, you know? see, Oscar even let me, tell you, is let, me a... tell you, let me tell you something about mob attorneys. They're criminals. <laughs> mob attorney mob attorneys are criminals and well, don't let anybody the government and when i was dealing with the government the government hates mob attorneys because they'll lie they cheat they'll steal mob attorneys are criminals and how do i know that because i dealt with them since i was 16 years old so well, i was in on a lot of maneuvers that were for gazy maneuvers yeah that were, so mob and and you know you're defending people that, you know, you know what they're doing. I mean, uh, you know, it's all about money. I you know, and I say it all the time on all the shows I do. At the end of the day, it's about the dollars. I mean, no matter which way you're twisting and turning in life, at the end of the day is what's, what, what, what are you paying me? What's my end? Yeah. Well, that guy I was talking about, Oscar, he parlayed that, uh, I guess, fame, if you will. He became the mayor of Las Vegas. He served yeah. three terms which is yeah. the max you can serve in Las Vegas. And now his wife's the uh, the mayor out there. Oh, my name's Anthony Ruggiano again. And thank you for watching Reform Gangsters. And once again, um, I do still have a recovery helpline, which is 855-963-2113. Uh, if anybody needs help in recovery from alcohol and drugs, please call that number. That's not a personal number to reach me. That's a number for people that need help. So please call that number if you need help. And uh, I look forward to seeing everybody on uh, March 12th. Like I said, if you want to come to the studio, please contact me at Anthony Ruggiano Jr. at gmail.com and we'll send you an invite. Thank you. Have a good night.